I'm Cornboy, and welcome to Trailblazer Leagues, a special old-school RuneScape event where XP rates are boosted, unlockable relics give your character superpowers, and everyone competes for points by completing tasks within unlockable regions. I have one main goal in mind, to defeat the legendary Tistokjad and earn the Fire Cape, one of the best and most iconic RuneScape items. This goal will send me all across RuneScape, learning more and more about a game I've loved for years. To add to the challenge, until I've proven my worth against Jad, I won't be training my attack or strength at all. This is the Trailblazer League. Ah, uh, here we are, the Trailblazer League. Well, not quite yet. It's the night before, there's about 12 hours until the start of the league, and I wanted to lay out my plan for the next two months. I'm after the coveted fire cape, the second best cape in the game for using melee. Look, I'm not good enough to get the infernal cape yet, okay? Beating Jad is much more my speed. This goal will ultimately help shape my league account, as there are so many sub-goals and challenges along the way to get the gear and stats necessary to defeat Jad. There's a catch, though. I won't be training my attack or strength at all until I receive the Fire Cape. This handicap won't make the fight caves harder for myself in theory, but it will lock some useful content for training and money-making. However, relying only on my range and magic skills, I should still become quite the skilled runescape warrior. Once I do earn the fire cape, I'll allow myself to train these skills. And honestly, it should be a ton of fun to start training level 1 combat stats with the fire cape. Also, at that point in my journey, I'll switch my focus from the fire cape to racking up league points and completing as many league tasks as I can. Speaking of league tasks, Let's go over the regions I'll be unlocking in this league. Everyone starts off with Mistelan and Karamja unlocked. So, I can access the fight caves immediately. Going there would be a huge mistake, but I could in theory. I also have all of Lumbridge, Varrock, Karamja, and some of the weirder RuneScape realms available. From here, I know my first unlock is going to be the Kandarin region. This area is full of so much content that it's too hard to pass up on. Along with Kandarin, I'm also unlocking Tirana, specifically for the Crystal Bow. This bow will be my bread and butter, and it's what I'll use to defeat Jad. It doesn't require any arrows to shoot, and it's quite powerful. Plus, upon unlocking Tirana, it's immediately available because Song of the Elves is auto-completed for you. Thank you, Jagex. I really appreciate that. Having both of these regions will also give me full access to Ivan's Staff a really powerful magic weapon, which should prove to be very useful. My third and final region unlock is currently undecided. I'm gonna wait to get my feet wet a bit before I make this decision. Every other region, not you, has some great content, and we'll just get there when we get there. As for my relics, well, you'll just have to wait and see. Partially because we literally only know four of them right now. Other than this basic outline though, I'm going in mostly blind. I don't have a set, tick-perfect, timed-out starting route or anything. I want to see where the wind takes me, and I want to try to learn a lot of unique and odd training methods along the way. For now, though, I'm going to go to bed. But when I wake up, I begin my journey. Oh my gosh, we're in. <laughs> we're in! Oh, we get to customize a person again? All right, here he is. Look at him. Oh, what a hunk. Yo, first task complete. We've got some classics in this menu. We've got achieve your first level up, complete the tutorial. I saw cook a shrimp up here a second ago. Dude, I feel like a kid in a candy store. There's so much to do. Easy travel, good. Oh, that gives you so much good information. There's a drops panel. All right, our first unlock, Aramja. Oh, look at him go, he's reading. Oh, that animation is sick! One of the coolest things about leagues is the relic system. 
After earning enough points by completing tasks, you get to choose one out of a handful of relics which will add huge upgrades to your account. The first tier of relics includes Endless Harvest, Production Master, and Skilling Prodigy. Endless Harvest doubles the amount of resources you get from gathering skills and automatically banks them. Production Master will instantly complete inventories with craftable items, and Skilling Prodigy will permanently boost non-combat skills by 12 levels. I've thought for a long time about which one I want to begin with. They're all very good. I feel like people are going to try hard with Skilling Prodigy. I feel like Production Master could be very useful for PVM. But I've decided that the relic I'm going to be taking is Endless Harvest. Look at that animation! Oh, that's so good! Ah, oh, we did it! We are ready to properly start our adventure in Leagues 2. And tutorial. And here we are! A bright, obnoxious, yellow, corn boy. Look at everybody running around! Oh, this is so exciting! Oh god, I feel like I'm eight years old again. Oh, this is so cool! Look at all this! Uh, I need to find something to do. Step one is gonna be getting to those second tiers of relics. Uh, looks like everyone is pickpocketing the men around here. <laughs> look, at, look at this horde of people going after this man. Someone died! <laughs> what is going on? Wait, give me the bones. Give me the bones. Oh wait, no, I'm an Iron Man. It's not gonna work. Oh god. All right. Let's go to the bank. Let's get our thoughts in order. All right. So I've had a look through all the relics, and some of these things are absolutely crazy. I'm so excited to start thinking about which one I'm going to pick. I don't even know where to begin on most of them, but I formulated a plan for today at least. I'm going to start with doing some basic quests and tasks around the area. A lot of these easy tasks involve very low skills or completing some quests or random things I can complete along the way. So I'm just going to focus on doing a lot of these for now, and I'll try to gather up some points. Hey, bud. All right, we've got milk, egg, and flour. So before I go back, let's do sheep shearer. Hey, cook, did your job for you. Okay, quest XP gets boosted also. That was 1,500 experience. What? Oh, level 11? Hey, Fred, I also did your job for you. And there's 750 crafting experience. All right, let's make our way up to Varrock. You just got people fletching everywhere, dropping everything. Oh, we're unlocking music tracks left and right. I can't do this yet. Oh, these skilling prodigy hacks. Look at them training agility. All right, let me not get murked by these dark wizards real quick. Oh my God. I believe there's a task for petting a very good boy. Oh, there he is. Who's a good little boy? All right, where's Romeo? There you are. I need to do your quest, Romeo. God, look at his face. Romeo, what's going on, man? Oh, the infinite run energy is so nice. I'm just zooming. I know it. <laughs> he just like thwomped me. Oh, look at this man, just straight chilling. Oh my God, look at all these fools. And probably none of them bots, which is a honestly comforting feeling. Hey, Juliet, uh, pretend to be dead for me. Hey, baby, I put the man in necromancy. And Romeo and Juliet complete. Also, while I'm up here, I should do the Varrock Museum mini quest. All right, I've completed this eighth grade science class for this very Australian man. Let's see how much experience I get. Oh, this is broken. Oh, this is the greatest thing to ever happen to RuneScape. One of the next things I'd like to do is Complete the Stronghold of Security and get the free 10k you get for reaching the bottom. Uh, however, before I do that, I'm gonna need some food, otherwise I'm gonna get absolutely murked when I go in there. So let's head back to Lumbridge to also grab some armor from the Iron Man Tutor. We're, we're, we're drawing a fun little pattern, fun little compass, and we. Oh yes, look at us now. Let's start pickpocketing some men. Oh, my first attempt is successful, and that was a task. There's 28 coin pouches, which when we open, is an easy task. Should probably head to Drainer and grab a Chronicle. But before I do that, it's shrimp time, baby. So this should be the first time Endless Harvest activates. So I believe when I catch something, oh, it goes right to my bank and I get double. 
Harvest gang, yeah! <laughs> Imagine banking. Couldn't be me. And we're already, after just a couple minutes, at 50 total shrimp, level 15 fishing, and we can catch anchovies. This is amazing. It's 400 XP for anchovies? I'm already at level 20? Uh, after fishing for just under five minutes, we've already hit 21 fishing and have a bank absolutely chock full of shrimp and anchovies. Now, as long as I don't get absolutely demolished by a giant swamp rat, uh, we should be good. Do our next league task, which is gonna be use some fairy rings and enter Xanaris. Use a fairy ring, enter Xanaris. Okay, we took a nice detour through the swamp. Now we can cook some shrimp. And there's use the range in Lumbridge Castle. Excellent. Three tasks for a couple shrimp. So just with the fish we had in the bank, we got to 29 cooking. We're making our way over to Drainer. The whole town is on fire, goddamn. 300 coins? Bro, I'm not made of money. We'll have to purchase the Chronicle some other time. Oh, okay, interesting. So I was wondering how they were gonna block off these regions, and it's just with these massive fucking pillar tumors. There's a bird nest up there. While I'm here, I'll do some of the Drainer Rooftop Agility course. Oh, look at all these people. It's a conga line. Oh, a 395 XP drop. Level 12 agility, and a task completed. All right, we're making our way back up to Varrock real quick. Partially to do some thieving, but mainly so we can enter the Stronghold of Security and claim that 10k finally. Uh, looks like a lot of people had this idea. All right, as long as we're doing this on tick with everybody, we'll be good. There's a task completed. So I just looked it up. Turns out Cup of Tea only heals you for three hit points, just like Shrimp. So there's not really much of a point in me stealing some. So I'll wrap up my inventory and go from there. So here we are, the first real test on this account. There's 2K, 5K. <laughs> oh, all right, just like that, we made it through safely, only took three damage, and now we've got a few emotes and 10K coins. All right, Diango, because I'm rolling in so many fat stacks now. Give me that Chronicle. Yeah. All right. I bought nine teleport cards. That should be good enough for now. So my current goal on the account is going to be unlocking this next relic as soon as I can. I made a little bit of a, an oopsie in terms of my efficient playing in that when you unlock the second relic, your XP boost goes from five times to eight times. And uh, I should probably unlock that as soon as possible. So we're gonna be completing some easy tasks, getting hit by trees on the way. That's why we're here at Drainer Manor, which is an easy task worth 10 points. All right, this is something I forgot to do when I was here earlier, uh, but there's a task for it. This is the official look of day one Trailblazer League. Again, like, you know, that guy's wearing the same thing. Oh, he picked the gross combat boot. Another task is to do some of the quests around this area, one of which being Gertrude's cat. What's interesting about this account restriction for me is that I need to check the XP rewards for every quest, uh, which is something I've never done before, but I don't want to accidentally train my attack and strength. So an interesting thing about uh, completing a quest as easy as Gertrude's cat. Normally, even on an Iron Man, this quest would take, you know, no time to complete. But when you can't get the port serum, it's a little difficult to get a fishing rod. So what I have to do is go all the way to Karamja, take the cart into Shiloh Village, and then next to the furnace, there's a fishing shop. Look at all the supplies sold to this shop. 20,000 oak longbows. Oh my God, I know how everyone's making their money. And there's Gertrude's cat completed. We achieved our first level 30. My next stop is up here at the Varrock real estate agent because we are doing the mini quest, Daddy's Home. However, I will not be making the same mistake twice, and I'm gonna go get the materials that I need for this quest right now, but I'm gonna wait to do it until I have my second relic unlocked. So my experience is times eight instead of times five. We've got everything we need to complete Daddy's home a little later, but for right now, we're gonna head to Drainer Village. Welcome back to the Drainer Rooftop course. We just completed a task for obtaining a Mark of Grace. Hey, my first random event. That's a free pie right there. And there we have it, 30 drainer laps, a whopping 50 points. 
uh, which is just phenomenal. Look at that. We only got 90 points to go until our next relic and 27 tasks until our next area. So what I decided I want my next goal to be, uh, step one is make this kitty grow up and be big and strong. Maybe sell him for death runes. But the main thing I want to do is a bunch of random tasks. So here's a fun tip. If you want to start farming, uh, Faith right at the back of Lumbridge Castle will actually sell some basic gardening materials. Relaxing raking content. Also, while we're here, but there's 10 points for chopping some logs. I have endless harvest. The logs don't end up in my inventory. I'm never gonna get used to that. There we go, task complete. There's copper ore. So let's come up here to the furnace and we'll smith some. They're not in my inventory. Smelt a bronze bar. Home teleporting. And easy as that, task complete. Right here in the corner, if we visit Death's Domain, there's an easy task completed. And we have pickpocketed a hand member for our penultimate 10 points. So while we're here, we got a new snazzy pair of gloves. Wonderful. Is everyone down here friendly? Oh, no, 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 not friendly, not friendly. Bad skeleton. Uh, Vanica, please give me an assignment. I can't use him yet. I, this has been a complete failure. Does this work? Hey, we found a workaround. We were able to buy uh, an enchanted gem for one coin and check our Slayer task, which is nothing but that still counts, which means we can unlock a new relic. The tier two relics all have to do with teleportation around the game. This includes Fairy's Flight, which gives players a fairy mushroom, allowing them to instantly teleport to a fairy ring or spirit tree wherever they are. Eternal Jeweler, which means jewelry no longer loses teleportation charges and gives players a handful of really useful ones. And last but not least. All right, here we are now in a bank, select Last recall for our second relic. Upon selecting this relic, you will receive a crystal of memories, which when used will teleport you back to the location from where your most recent teleport occurred. Essentially meaning that we can just teleport back and forth from any good skilling spots, any monsters, any place that's unsafe. Tons of training methods are made so efficient with this item. In my opinion, the best one of the three. Maybe even more importantly though, is that our XP rates are now boosted by times eight instead of just times five. What I'm gonna do right now with the items we got earlier is complete daddy's home. Well, waiting till I had relic two was absolutely worth it for this quest because just from repairing the furniture, I'm at 19 construction and we still get a bonus for finishing the quest. Arlo, I'm back. Shower me with gifts. Oh, and we get all of this stuff for free. So this is potentially even more construction levels. Uh, not only that, but we now have a player own house, which is a task. And we got uh, reimbursed a little bit for our money, too. Well, now that our second relic is unlocked and daddy's home is done, we need another thing to do. And I think something that I've been super excited for and something that I think would be really beneficial for leagues in general is going to be going to Fossil Island and setting up my birdhouses. Birdhouses are an excellent source of money, seeds, jewelry even, and not to mention hunter experience. There's a handful of supplies that I'm going to need to regularly do birdhouse runs, the main of which are logs, which are easy enough to get with endless harvest. I'm also going to need tons of seeds, Hopefully I can get these through raising my thieving and pickpocketing master farmers. The hardest thing to get that I need is going to be clockwork. In order to make these, you need a crafting table too within a workshop in your player owned house. This is going to involve getting oak planks, molten glass, and steel bars. I already have the construction and crafting levels to build them, I just need the money to build the room. So, I'm going to make my way over there, we'll complete quite a few tasks on the way, and I'm excited. We just mined a piece of iron there, which got us an easy task in the Varrock area, and also uh, 19 mining after just mining two of them. But anyway, we're gathering up some resources for building the bank on Fossil Island, which is another task. And after this, I'm gonna go buy some rope and drainer and then make my way over. So a handy tip if you're in need of rope, Ned here in drainer sells you some rope. 
Hey, we just hit 30 mining. Just finished up some smithing training, doing some bronze bars and everything. And we made a couple, you know, random crappy items, but we got to level 20 pretty quickly. If you're looking to train smithing by smithing bars, the Shiloh Village Bank is right across the street from a furnace. I noticed that I missed a pretty important milestone. During my smithing grind, I hit 250 total level, which is an easy task. We are about to hit 15 wood cutting. There we go. So now I can mine oak trees. I can mine oak trees. I can chop oak trees. Another interruption, but endless harvest is just wonderful. I can stand here, inventory basically full. Everything just gets put in my bank. I'm racking up levels like crazy. Oh, endless harvest all the way, baby. Let's go. All right, it's finally time. We are headed to Fossil Island, ready to build everything there. And I'm bringing my Crystal of Memories with me. This should be a great teleportation method to the island. The second you boot up into Trailblazer Leagues, Bon Voyage is already done for you. So you don't even need to worry about doing any of this. You can just run up here to the boat at the very north end of the dig site and sail over right to Fossil Island. And here we are. That's an easy task traveling over here. But now we are going to build this campsite. <laughs> There's third. How much was that? Excuse me? Worth 2,000 experience and an easy task in the league. So just building this area, doing daddy's home, gets you all the way to 39 construction, which is my highest skill. Not only that, but also this area has coal and iron available. There's lots of great stuff all over this place. And I got interrupted here with a surprise exam. Great, so that is the second official random event. I think at least for right now, this book of knowledge is going to be worth spending on herb lore. All right, so we are back on Karamja in Brimhaven, right near the house portal. We're going to run up here to the charter ships, and this is where we're going to get our molten glass. Seaweed is only five coins, a glass blowing pipe, only five coins. There we go. We've got all we need to make some molten glass. We get some soda ash. You can add one use and we get molten glass, which is exactly what we need. So I can go right up here and enter my own house. Oh, and interesting, entering the portal counts as a teleport for the Crystal of Memories. Okay, very interesting. So now that we're in here, in order to build our clockwork, we are going to need a workshop. Hopefully I have enough money for this. I absolutely do not. Oh boy. So this certainly throws a wrench in my gears. I've got to find a way to make 10,000 gold if I want to build this workshop and get these birdhouse runs going. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to Kandarin. <laughs> 